Okay, today's lesson is going to be a brief introduction to, uh, to Greek drama. So make sure you pay attention throughout the lesson because there will be a couple things that you have to research for the next class. And the reason we are um, having an introduction to Greek drama is because we are going to be studying the Theban plays and focusing on Oedipus and Antigone by Sophocles. So a little bit about the Greek theater background. Uh, Greek tragedy, it was a popular and influential form of drama performed in theaters across ancient Greece from around the late, eight, oh, sorry, the late 6th century uh, BC. Most of the famous playwrights, and playwrights are people who write plays of the genre, were Aeschylus, Sophocles, and Euripides. Many of their works are still performed centuries after their initial premiere, such as Sophocles uh, performed, Oedipus is still performed, and Antigone as well. Um, the ancient Greeks took their entertainment very seriously. They used drama as a way of investigating the world they lived in and what it meant to be human. Something interesting is that the Greek theater hist history began with festivals honoring their gods. Dionysius is the main god of, uh, of the theater. He was honored with the festival called by Sidiu Dionysia. And in Athens during this festival, men used to perform songs to welcome him. And the plays were only presented at the city Dionysia festival. He was the god of fertility and wine, and he was later considered a patron of the arts. Now, there are three different types of uh, genres of drama that I'll be going over briefly in this PowerPoint, but the main one that we're going to study is the tragedy. So there's comedies and satires as well. Real quick, I just wanted to mention the design of the Greek theater. It is not very different than what we have today in theaters, although the main difference is that the Greek tragedies and comedies, they were always performed in outdoor theaters. And today there aren't many outdoor theaters. Um, you know, most of them performed inside because we have acoustics and everything like that. But you know, during this time, we just had to rely on the actual structure of the theater to produce the best sound. So I just want to look it over real quick. The um, um, From the late 16th century BC to probably the 4th and 3rd centuries, there was a gradual evolution towards a more elaborate theater structure. Uh, however, the basic layout, what I have sh um, shown you here in this picture, remains the same. And the major components, as you can see, are labeled on the diagram. The first main section right here is the orchestra. This was called the dancing space. It was normally circular. This is where the chorus would dance, sing, and interact with the actors who were on stage near the scheme, which is down here. The earliest orchestras, they were made of the hard earth, but in the classical periods, a little bit later on, orchestras began to be paved with marble and other materials. So as you can see, it's getting fancier and fancier as we move along in the years. It was probably about this one, the ancient Greek one was probably about 60 uh, feet in diameter. Okay, the next part up here is the theatron or the viewing place. So that's where the spectator sat. It was usually part of the hillside overlooking the orchestra, and it wrapped around a large portion of the orchestra. Uh, the spectators in the 5th century, they probably sat on cushions or boards, but by the 4th century, uh, many Greek theaters had marble seats. If you've ever been to, or not even been to, but you've seen pictures of um, you know, an ancient Greek theater from, from Greece, or if you've been to uh, places in Italy that still have this or yeah, places in Italy that still have this old style, uh, di uh, sorry, old style theater. It's pretty cool to actually go in there because you can almost hear everything going on without speakers and without amplifying what the um, characters are saying. Okay, the next part is the scheme, which is down here. This is the tent, the building directly behind the stage. Um, it was usually decorated as a palace or temple, some kind of other building, depending on the needs of the play. It had one set of doors. Actors could make exits and entrances through it. So maybe they were playing gods or other characters where they needed to access um, the roof. They could go up on the roof at this time. Um, and there, um, I'm sorry, I already said there was access on the roof you know, for the purpose of the actors playing gods. Sorry, I didn't mean to repeat myself. 
And then the last part is the parados. This is the passageway. Um, these are paths by which the chorus and some actors made their entrance and exits. The audience can also use them to enter and exit the theater before and after the performance. So um, very basic, but we still have these same parts today. Okay, let's briefly talk about the different types of um, plays. There's the comedy. The comedies were mainly satirical. They mocked men in power for their vanity, for their foolishness. Um, the first comedic playwright was Aristophanes. He was the master of comedy. And you have Menander wrote about comedies, or sorry, wrote comedies about ordinary people, and he made his plays more like sitcoms. Shakespeare is very popular for his comedies today. There aren't many Greek comedies that, there are some, but there aren't many that still exist. Okay, the next one is satires. These were short plays. They are performed between the acts of tragedies, and they made fun of the tragedy's characters. The satires is where they come from. They were based on the half-human, um, the, the mythical half-human, half-goat figures, and sometimes these actors wore large phalluses uh, for comic effect. A few of these plays survived, if, if any. And then tragedy is the most popular ones, and the one that we are going to study uh, the most is they dealt with big themes of love, loss, pride, abuse of power, uh, the fraught relationships between men and gods. Typically in a tragedy, the main protagonist of a tragedy commits some kind of terrible crime without realizing how foolish or uh, arrogant he is. And that's basically the definition of a tragic hero and the tragic hero's um, hubris. But eventually, slowly, the protagonist realizes his error. However, his world crumples around him, and that was um, yeah, that's the main that's the main purpose of almost every good tragedy written. And the three playwrights that I mentioned earlier, um, the most famous ones, are the best ones for tragedy. We are going to be studying Sophocles. Okay, uh, the plot of a tragedy was almost always inspired by episodes from Greek mythology. However, since some of these subjects were so serious because they focused on Greek religion and they might have dealt with moral rights and wrongs, there was no violence permitted on the stage. And if there was a death of a character, it had to be heard from offstage and not seen. And some of that actually carried into Shakespeare's plays as well during that time. And even like at some of the early stages of the, um, of the genre, the poet couldn't make any comments or political statements throughout the play. It was just... You don't want to go against you don't want to go against your leaders. And Aristotle argued that tragedy cleansed the heart through pity and terror, purging us as, purging us of our petty concerns and worries by making us aware that there could be nobility in suffering. And this is a part of tragedy which we will learn much later called catharsis. Okay, so what I want you to do for your assignment for the next day in class, I just want you to research a few fun facts for each topic below. Uh, just to discuss with the class. You'll get some points for it. You don't have to do more than five for each. Find some facts that you think the other classmates aren't going to find. So, you know, some major writers of the tra of tragedy, the three that I mentioned earlier, I think in the first in the first slide, see what you can find out about them, maybe what their plays were about. And then major tragedies, choose one or two, find out something about them to share with the class. And then I want you to look up Aristotle's definition of tragedy, okay, Aristotle the philosopher. And Pick out one or two aspects that you think might be worth discussing. And then if you still want more information on the Greek theater, check out this YouTube video here.